Molecular formulas can be the same as empirical, but they don't always have to be. All right, so jot that down, <clears throat> is that they can be the same as empirical, but not always. Yeah, it's just the uh, goggle cat. It's cleaning the goggles. It's just a UV light that's in there, so it's just, you know, attacking and killing any microorganisms that might be crawling on the goggles and stuff, sterilizing them. All right, so what, that, what I mean by that, guys, is take a look here at this example. Our molecular formula is C2H6. The empirical formula would be the simplest ratio, where that would be CH3. We could reduce it down. So molecular doesn't have to be reduced down. This is, think about it, our molecular compounds in Unit 5, where you had something like dinitrogen um, tetraoxide, N2O4, right? That's not an empirical formula. So there's a little way to think about it, how we do that. So molecular formula equals the empirical formula with X. Now, X on the outside of a parenthesis, remember, gets distributed inside to all the other subscripts that each element would have. So really what we need to do is figure out X. What is X? It's a ratio of the molecular mass, which is the actual mass, over the empirical mass. Again, they might be the same. They might be different. Empirical is the simplest ratio. Molecular could be that, or it could be a multiple of it. So we're basically trying to figure out how does the molecular mass relate to the empirical mass. And here's how you're going to solve this. They will give you the molecular mass in a problem. You're not going to have to figure it out. You may have to figure out the empirical mass to get this little ratio, but you will always have to be given that molecular mass. So here we go. Let's jump into a problem together. Empirical formula is given to us. Hey, so we didn't have to do that process from yesterday. There's going to be problems where I give you percentages. You have to figure out the empirical mass and the, or empirical formula. Then from there, use that data to figure out the molecular formula. But it says it's P2O5. What's the name of that compound? Diphosphorus pentoxide. Experimentation shows that the molecular mass of this compound is 283.89 grams per mole. What is the compound's molecular formula? So here we go. We're looking for MF. So MF equals EF, the empirical formula, with X. So we've got to figure out what X is, okay, which is just a ratio. We're going to compare the masses of our two compounds. So X is going to equal the molecular mass over our empirical mass. Do I have either my molecular mass or my empirical mass? Yeah, I have the molecular, right? They give me that. That's going to be my 283.89 grams per mole. Do I have the empirical mass given to me? No, but can I find it? Yeah, because what am I going to use? Yeah, I'm going to use my empirical formula. Go ahead and calculate the molar mass for diphosphorus pentoxide. 141.9. 944, I'm just going to call it 94. All right, so there's our empirical mass. We got that from our empirical formula, just adding it up. So now we're just going to figure out how those two masses relate. So I'm going to plug it in. X equals 283.89 grams per mole divided by 141.94 grams per mole. How do I get what? I took my empirical formula which is right here, and then I just did the molar mass. So I didn't show the work for it, Zach, but you take your P, oxygen, so two times the molar mass, and I just go through that process. I just didn't show the step here. Good question. Again, if I'm going too fast, guys, just let me know. That's a great example of that. So we were given the molecular mass, dividing it now by the empirical that we calculated. <clears throat> Five times 16, and this was 30.97-ish. All right, and that's where we got that 141. So when I divide that, X is going to equal what? 2. X equals 2. Now, I'm not completely done, but I've, you know, a huge step in the right direction. So to figure out my molecular formula, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my empirical formula, which was P2O5. I'm going to write that in here. 
And I'm going to multiply, well, not really multiply, but on the outside, now I've got a subscript of my x, which is 2. What's that going to do? Distribute inside to all my other subscripts. We've seen this already. We've seen it with polyatomic ions. So this is really nothing brand new to us. The only new piece is, hey, I've got to think about the ratio between my molecular mass and my empirical mass. Your molecular guys, listen here. Molecular mass will either be bigger or equal to the empirical. It will never be less than the empirical mass. Okay? It will either be bigger than or equal to the empirical mass. It will never be smaller than the empirical mass. So what's my formula, my molecular formula actually going to be? P4O10. P4O10. Notice how it's a multiple of my empirical. Is that the simplest whole number ratio? No, but it's still a whole number ratio. It's just a little bit larger. Okay. Remember, they will have to give you the molecular mass. You don't ever have to guess for that. And this is a technique that is used all the time. When I was in grad school, we would do something. We'd get a molecular mass on one of our instruments, and then we would start to go to work to figure out what the formula was and what the structure was from that using other techniques. All right, so it's something that chemists use all the time when they're looking for new compounds. All right. Questions? Is anything completely brand new? Now, we've done this math all along. It's just a new application of it. I want you guys to try example number one there on that page. All right, so I'm going to start working it out. Check your work. This is my governing formula thing that I'm going to use to help me figure it out. So I've got to start breaking it down into pieces. What's x? x equals molecular mass over empirical mass. About 48 is what you should get for your molar mass. Nope, 46, excuse me. Hey, everybody makes a mistake. It's okay. I know. 46. So what's X going to be when we plug that in? 92 divided by 46 equals 2. Do you think it's always going to be 2 for X? No, guys. It just happened to work out this way with these two problems. So now we're going to take our... Empirical formula, which was NO2 times 2, distribute that inside. So we're going to get N2O4 is what you should have for example number 1. Questions? How do we do? Awesome. All right. Number 2, go ahead and try that on your practice sheet. It looks like this right here. So you have 70 grams per mole for your molecular mass. Your empirical formula is what? CH2. CH2 is your formula. So EF equals CH2. <clears throat> and that's it, right? You're looking for the molecular formula. MF equals blank. So we need to find our X value here. So X is going to equal 70 divided by what's 12 and 2 is going to be pretty much about what? 14. When you divide 70 by 14, what do you get? Five. You get 5. So it's going to be multiplied by 5. Your molecular formula is going to equal C5H10. That's what you should have gotten. Now, problem number 3, which is this one right here. What's different about this, guys? You have to find the empirical formula and then take it a step further to figure out the molecular formula. So you're giving the percentages. This is what we did yesterday. What's our saying to help us remember how to figure out empirical formula? Mass. Nope, that's the second one. Percent to mass. Percent to mass. Mass to mole. Divide by small. Divide by small times the whole. Go ahead and tackle this problem, and then we'll do it up here, and then I'll give you your homework. So again, the first thing you've got to calculate your... Empirical mass, or empirical formula, excuse me. So you can check your work.
How many moles of carbon do you get? Bless you. 1.998. You sure? Moles. Moles. Not the, not the ratio. Just how many moles of carbon do you get? What's that? 3.33 moles. Hydrogen you have about 6 point something or other. 6.65. Okay. And oxygen would be about 3 point. Okay. Which one are we going to divide by? Carbon, 3.33. That's going to be 1. This down here is going to be 1 as well. And this is going to be about 2. two. So our formula, our, what formula do we have here, guys? This is my empirical. empirical formula. So my EF is going to equal CH2O. You with me? Anybody, how many of you got that? Good so far? Okay. Now, if you mess this up, I will say, if you, you will see a problem like this on your test on Friday. Okay. Lots of partial credit here. Let's say you did this part wrong, but you did everything else based on this correct. You would get the points for that. You'd lose a couple points here. So there's possibility for a lot of partial credit. Molecular formula. All right, we're going to take a look. We've got our mass is going to be 60. Our empirical formula here, mass, is going to be 16 plus 12 is 28. This is about 30. So 30, X is going to be 2. So my molecular formula should have C2. H4, O2 is what you should get. Now, I know I went through that kind of quickly. See me if you have questions. Your homework tonight is page 12. There are six problems. That's what your quiz will be on tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to go over the, these problems. 